Yeah. I heard Boston Garden was famous for doing that. Yeah, oh, man. 40 uh, fixed the locker rooms? Yeah, I heard all the secrets that the Celtics used to, <laughs> used to do to opponents. Heard all of them. All right, let's get started. Go ahead, guys. Kyrie P.J. talked about it the other day. He talked about just you and some of the other veterans sharing your wisdom and knowledge for guys who are about to participate in their first playoffs. Just what was the message you were trying to get across? Um, I mean, just to have a, a great approach and a great mentality and, and be prepared for uh, war, you know, metaphorically, right? Just, um, you know, it's the, it's the hardest, uh, most difficult time uh, to win ball games because, you know, you know the other team well, you know their tendencies, their habits. And after game one, it's pretty much adjustments and um, uh, just go into the internal um, – kind of layer where you're you're just trying not to get too ahead of yourself you're trying to take one game at a time one minute at a time so you just got to be balanced stay focused limit the distractions and um, just do what you've been doing since you were a kid and have fun doing it so our young guys will be prepared um, but until uh, they go through it they won't have any idea what it's like so I'm excited for them uh, and to be alongside them to lead them um, you know so I had that in my first playoff series uh, when we were playing against the Celtics when I was 24. So uh, my first game went pretty well. We, we won, and um, you know I just look at look back at those moments to use them as examples for the young guys. So just it's nothing to be nervous about. We've been playing basketball our whole lives. We we ended the season really well, so we have confidence going to the playoffs, and um, just gotta err on the side of that. Do you get nervous anymore in big games? Yeah, I get some nerves. Yeah, but I think I do my best to transmute it into a strength and just allow it to not con or allow it to drive me instead of consume me. Because um, in the past, I've I've definitely been very anxious, very nervous for games, and it could get the best of me mentally. How are you feeling, Game Seven in 2016, heading into that shot? Uh, man, just right moment, right time, great move. Um, yeah, just one of those historical moments that I was poised and ready for. This is what me and my dad used to practice in the backyard um, pretty often, and that's what I really take my mind to in those moments in playoff series, just going one-on-one, -on -one, imagining myself going against some of the greatest of all time. And uh, I like our, the challenge for our first series of going against, you know, four future Hall of Famers and uh, getting a chance to see where we – where we uh, stack up, uh, that's that's really exciting. We've, we've seen you hit shots like that this season. You think about the Nuggets game and that insane lefty. Yeah. You hit. What makes you successful in those clutch moments? Uh, it's just the trust in the, the basketball gods, as they say. Uh, really just trust in the preparation. And, um, you know, I think you guys have heard me say it throughout the season, just the hours that no one sees, you know, the 1230 lifts uh, at night, the 1 a.m. lifts, waking up early, stretching, um, just – doing all the things necessary to make sure I'm taking care of myself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, and um, just going on about my day and letting basketball be a release and, and a creative expression and also a healthy challenge for me um, to raise the bar every single time I go out there. Can you, can, you com can you compare where this team is right now entering the playoffs to any of the other teams that you – and then just – is this team playing better going to the playoffs? <laughs> nah, man. Comparisons to the Thief of Joy, especially when you're trying to compare teams because you play with so many different uh, great players. But, um, you know, for me, it's my first 50 win season or six years. So I don't take that for granted. It, it took a, a long time to get here. I know what it feels like to fail for the past six years and not reach, um, you know, our team goals or individual goals. Uh, so I use that energy to get me prepared for what's coming. And, um, just let the uh, controllables be controlled and then, um, you know, be prepared for kind of the unknown and, and just dig deep into that will that I have inside to lead some of these guys and also let them lead me because I'm going to need a help, a lot of help in these series too. So you're going into your first postseason with Luka Doncic as a yes. teammate. What does that mean to you and what have you guys talked about what this time means for you guys to be able to help lead this team? Uh, it's exciting. Uh, I think we know uh, what we're both capable of. Um, I think you you have seen it throughout this season where we really raise our level in big games, going against some of the greatest players in our league, and uh, we want to be challenged by the best. And uh, I think that's the championship pedigree you need, the integrity you need of just welcoming all challengers and um, you know just letting basketball be basketball, man. Uh, and again, the most important thing is just limit distractions. Don't bring in that extra stuff to the court. And uh, you know, at the end of that 48 minutes, then it's just one game. Um, you know, not. 
it's the first of four, so we just got to take it one day at a time. Along those lines, Jason the other day had an interesting take about uh, your role and in, in, in legacy that if you played in a game with four, the four best players ever to set foot on the planet, <laughs> after that game, they'd still be talking about something you did. <laughs> so I'm yeah. wondering what kind of... Uh, is, is that come naturally, or what? What kind of flair? How do you get that sort of a, of a flair? Uh, I I believe part of it is innate. It's in my DNA. I mean, my grandparents have played basketball. My dad played basketball. My mom played basketball. Uh, but I also grew up in uh, the five boroughs of New York. Uh, you know, playing outside, playing indoor, and that's what I grew up around was that entertainment. Um, you know, level of basketball, going out to the park and trying different moves and uh, some of the greatest moves I've ever made, uh, no one's ever seen, you know? So uh, a lot of those habits have come over time of just learning how to have the entertainment, but the most important thing is leaving out of there with a win and uh, doing it on both ends of the floor and maximizing on your potential. So if you can do it out, one of those flashy moves, as they say, you know, that's what they call it back in the day, flashy moves. We just call it, you know, a vibe, you know, just something that we do out here now, just getting to get into the bag or get into a bucket. Um, you know, you try to have, you try to marry the balance of uh, being able to um, practice those enough where it just becomes innate and um, it just looks normal. You know, I think if we watched me back in the 60s, I, I think I probably, <laughs> I, I don't know, what, I don't know what type of <laughs> legacy I would have had, you know, if people would have saw me dribbling the way I was dribbling. But um, I think what I like to think back to is the guys who came before me who really set that standard um, and really tried to push the bounds of creative expression on the basketball court. It enables me to be who I am. Do you feel, like, you, 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 you feel like you've partnered well in your life or have other people partnered well with you? Uh, I think it's it's been both. Um, I play with a lot of high-level thinkers, a lot of high-level players, um, and a lot of players that put pressure on themselves to succeed. Um, that uh, sometimes can help or hinder uh, certain partnerships. So I've learned uh, just how to be more mature in my approach uh, to people's emotions. And um, I think I like to lean in on the side of, of connecting through our love of the game and our love of winning and our love of competing at a very high level. And uh, you know, win, lose, or draw, I'm still going to love you. And that matters. Um, you know, when you say that to somebody, just go out and do your best. And no matter what, win, lose, or draw, we're, we're good. We're brothers. Curry, what have you guys gotten from a defensive standpoint this season from Derrick Jones? Oh, man, he's improved tremendously. He was already a great defender, but now that he has other guys uh, alongside of him that – also love to play defense, no disrespect to any of his other teammates, um, you know, other teams. I, I just think he has guys behind him that really empower him to um, be liberated as a defender. He, You got to let guys like that roam. You got to let guys like that take healthy risk and um, just try to have his back as much as possible and also give him a break when he needs it. He goes um, extremely hard for us on the defensive end, so we try to reward him on the offensive end by giving him opportunities to be successful as well. Kyrie, um, obviously Jason Kidd received some criticism last year. This year, I think he's done a great job of helping turn things around. What have you thought about okay. his performance with the Mavericks? What do you mean criticism? Last, Last year, year, when you guys struggled a little bit, he received some criticism just from outside. Oh, yeah. I think every head coach is going to receive criticism. You know, he's uh, you know one of the leaders of the team. And uh, a lot of our wins and losses, he takes a lot of the responsibility. And um, I just commend him for that, and I love him for it. Um, but us as players, we want to protect him, and we want to be successful for all of us because, um, you know, all of our legacy is on the line at this point. Uh, I think if you look at some of the guys on our team, we've dealt with a lot of naysayers, a lot of critics, a lot of noise, um, just like other teams, but I think specifically with us. Um, you know, somehow I was called a chaos agent for, for a little bit, and there was this narrative that I'm a locker room cancer and all these things that ended up becoming um, – just these run a show media pundits and um, I didn't want to be the butt of the, anyone's joke and I don't mind being a butt of anyone's jokes but not at the uh, expense or consequence of my teammates success and our success as an organization so I've just taken uh, you know a lot of hits learned how to hit back learn how to protect myself learn how to protect my brothers and my sisters and keep the main thing the main thing. Kyrie going back to the partnership uh, topic yeah. you know, LeBron obviously you know go all the way in 2016 mm -hmm. Are there, what if any similarities do you find in the tandem with Luca that give you belief you can do the same thing? Uh, I mean, again, like comparisons to Thiefa Joy, so I, I do my best to, um, you know, put those moments in my career as like chapters and, you know, something in the past. But what I can learn from that chapter, what I had with Braun was uh, we, we just had a fluidity 
of uh, just where we were going to be on the court, and we knew where we wanted the ball, and there was a mutual respect there. And uh, when it was his time to take over games or it was my time to take over games, we allowed each other to do that. Uh, and also we, we had to have some, you know, kind of mother effort moments to each other where we challenged each other and, um, you know, you never saw us get in each other's faces as often or anything like that, but we did challenge each our, uh, we did challenge ourselves, and, and thus us challenging each other, we were able to challenge everyone on the team to be better. So I think that's what enabled us to be successful in 2016. And I think me and Luca are doing the same thing here. When you know you have uh, somebody that can be challenged, and I could look to Luca and be like, "Hey, man, like, come on, turn this, turn this ish up a little bit," or he'd be like, "All right, come on, Kai, say it in his language," or you know, he'll say something to me, and, and um, you know, it even is a more of an encouraging celebratory moment, like just getting somebody going on a positive uh, note uh, goes a long way. So I, I feel like that's a similarity of just keeping the positivity going. But when the going gets tough, you know you have somebody that's in the foxhole with you that's ready to go and shoot all their ammo out into their empty. You need people like that that's not afraid to empty their clips. Team USA announced its basketball roster for the Olympics. I think a lot of us were surprised you weren't on it. Did you want to play on it, Kyrie? Yeah, I would have loved to. Um, but I think uh, I wish my brothers well, and I just didn't fit into this team. And I think the deliberation process was a tough one. Um, but again, I have nothing but respect for those guys over at USAB. Um, you know, at this point in my career, I, I think my focus uh, should be on winning the championship and, you know, in the summertime, just going to support those guys when I get a chance. Um, but yeah, uh, I grew up in a time too, I wanted to say this, I grew up in a time too where we actually had to try out for USAB and we did meet up as a group and as peers and there was a mutual respect that we earned from one another and trying out and then seeing what five meshed well. So I think obviously the timing's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I kind of miss those days of just being able to get everybody together, um, break bread and then compete against one another. And then the deliberation process happens at the end of like the four days or five day process, even though people know who's going to be on the team. You know what I'm saying? So I just I miss that fun part of it, of just uh, getting together. But I, I wish my brothers well. Yeah. Just lastly, in terms of going into game one, you know, you said coming out of game one, you make adjustments mm -hmm. for the rest of the series. Do you use that game one as like a feel out game where you see what works and see what? Yeah, I, I I guess you can call it a feel out game. I, I think it's more or less a, a just um, the beginning of a chess match. You know, you just trying to think three moves ahead, trying to see different things that your opponent's going to risk. What are they going to show? And I've been able to play on the T. Lou for a little bit. So um, I feel like I know him well enough at this point. He knows me well enough, but I'm at a different place in my life. He's at a different place in his life. I'm not the young kid, 24, that he can just, you know, probably put in these predicaments and throw the ball all around the place. Uh, so I kind of know what to expect, but also I'm, I'm intrigued to see what adjustments he's going to make. Well, Daniel, you've been so successful since you've been here. What is, what is it about this team that seemed like it's a perfect fit for you? Um, in all honesty, you know, the chemistry when I got here was already through the roof. And it's just like when I got here, I kind of just piggybacked off of it. At the end of the day, everybody was playing for each other. Everybody was happy. The energy was positive. Everybody wanted to really just play to win, in all honesty. You know, we came out. Like when I first got here, you know, it's just like I was I already played here. Like I used to, uh, like I told media when I first got here, it's just like I was already on this team when mm -hmm. I first got here. Just playing is just I was in the right spot at the right time. Guys were telling me things to do, things not to do, how to just really just succeed on the floor, playing playing around, just like all the guys on this team. And when you saw the trade went through, and you going from a team that's going to the lottery to a team that's getting ready to win 50 games, uh, what was your mindset at that time? I mean, it was one door closed and another door open for me. It was another opportunity for me to get better just throughout just like my career. And it's just something that I really just, you know, hold my head up high on because at the end of the day, this is a business, you know. Every destination is not probably going to be like a solidified destination. So that's something that I've learned early on because, you know, when I had went through my first year and a half, I did get traded from Chicago. So it was pretty much the same way, you know. So just piggybacking off of just something that I've already experienced, just taking it one day at a time. Piggybacking off you talking about the chemistry when you first got here, you haven't been around Kyrie and Luca a ton, but what's your sense of how primed they are to kind of lead this team deep in the playoffs? Oh, I mean, in all honesty, like, you know, we, they lead the pack and we're right behind them at the end of the day, you know, and they just for sure just have that mindset of just making sure that they 
get guys locked in when it comes to just like the battle that we're about to go into. You know, it's not easy to win in the playoffs. It's not even easy just to win in the regular season with how many wins we got. We had to fight for every win down the road. And those guys told us it was just every night is going to be a battle, whether it's a regular season game, preseason game, or a playoff game at the end of the day. Do you feel like there are expectations for this team outside of the building? Like people look at the Mavericks as a team that can win the championship or you're under the radar? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Just like from things that I've heard just pretty much anywhere. You know, at the end of the day, it's a lot of people saying that we can go all the way. It's a lot of people saying that, you know, we're going to be first round exits. You know, it's a bit of a balanced scale at the end of the day. But with what we believe in, that's the only thing that matters. At the end of the day, we go out and we play, 100, play at 110%. It's going to give us the opportunity to really go far in the playoffs for sure. With this first round series, we know the status of Kawhi Leonard is kind of in mm -hmm. flux right now. Are mm -hmm. you guys preparing as if he's going to be in the lineup, or you didn't have adjustments in case? Almost done. Not? Preparing for him to be in the lineup, preparing for everybody, for everybody to be playing at the end of the day, because you know you have to be prepared, and the best preparation is always preparing. <laughs> in all honesty, you know the worst preparation is no preparation. So we for sure are not going to take that road. We're going to just prepare for anybody to be on the floor at the end of the day. So if he's out there, we already prepare for him. If he's not, we still prepare for him. You know. <laughs> that being said, the Clippers got a lot of guys that like to get downhill, get to the uh -huh. rim. Um, but you being rim protector that you are, I guess how how does that impact? your defensive mindset going into this series? It really just gives me the motivation to just go out and just do my job at an elite level, just to be the best that I can be at any given standpoint when it comes to possession, possession game, night in, night out, just being there for my teammates on the back end, trying to anchor the defense and just being the loudest guy out there, trying to make sure everybody knows where to be, knows where screens are coming from, man, just pretty much knowing just, you know, you got somebody back here that's going to keep you protected at the end of the day, just in case if something breaks down on the front lines. Between the two teams, there's six guys that are probably locks for the Hall of mm -hmm. Fame. Do you think that star power will elevate this series in any way in terms of performance mm -hmm. and more visibility? In my opinion, yes. You know, at the end of the day, like what I've been told, you know, the last five years, they've played them in the first rounds, like three of those years, right? You know, that's insane. <laughs> so just really just thinking on that, it's going to be a lot of energy and it's going to be a lot of hype around this, you know, first round for sure when it comes to these two teams going against each other. What's allowed this team to have success on the road? Just staying locked in, having positivity, and just knowing it's not going to be easy to win on the road, for sure. You know, at the end of the day, it's like like Kyrie had said early on in the season when we had kind of like went through that slump. Um, he was saying, we got, we got a target on our backs. At the end of the day, everybody's going to come out and give us their best game. And that's what they were doing, especially at the time when we were losing games when I had first got here. It's just everybody was coming out and just giving us their best basketball, and we weren't adjusting to it. So, you know, once we found ways to kind of like come together and build that, I would say, positive chemistry as a team, it's something that helped us out for sure. What, what was the turning point in that early March period, do you think? Mm, I would say I can't remember what loss it was. I think it was after the one we had at home before we went on the road. We just kind of, you know, came together, talked to each other, spent some time with each other, and just kind of, you know, hashed it out and just figured out ways to just talk to each other at the end of the day. In this league, it's a lot of times where it's a lot of guys, you know, you got leaders, you got vets, and then you got, you know, the guys that are under the vets. At the end of the day, it's a lot of people that don't really, you know, want to talk to each other, you know, and that's just because of just like how life is. It's all about how you react. It's all about how you approach someone. And, you know, figuring out ways to do that the right way helps the team kind of really just progress and take that step forward. And that's exactly what we did. Since you've been mentioning the same songs with Will Chamberlain, since you've been mentioning the same songs with Will Chamberlain a lot of times this season, <laughs> what can you do to take your game to another level against the Clippers? Uh, really just stay patient. In all honesty, and just keep doing what I've been doing, but do it at pretty much be better than the day before, and just really just put you know one foot ahead of each other and just take it one step at a time for sure. Daniel, you, you mentioned how this at the end of the day this is a business, this league mm -hmm. is a business. When you learned that lesson, did that change how you kind of saw the league or approached even your game? It most definitely helped me just like really humble myself. In all honesty, I mean I'm in a league with a lot of talented guys. At the end of the day, I'm not the best out there. So when it comes to that. One of the jobs that I knew I was going to have to do, I was going to have to work day in, day out, no matter where I was, no matter who I was playing with, no matter what team I was on. Um, just coming in and just having that mindset to just get better, just to help the team that I'm on, on a day-to-day -day basis is kind of like one thing that kind of like helped me just really just unlock my potential, I would say. You know, just, <laughs> I would say being a little bit more vocal, it helped me kind of like change myself in ways that I didn't think I was going to be able to change. What do you remember about that, your playoff series back when you were 
youngster? Uh, uh, when I got to Washington? shooting 85%. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, when I got to Washington, it was just like my first time that I actually got a chance to really just fully play against Joel Embiid. And man, that was a that was a time for sure. <laughs> that was a time for sure. It's just that, but like for sure, that one series that alone for like helped me mentally lock into just like how I wanted to just like prepare for the game, prepare mentally, physically, emotionally, everything when it came to just like off the floor and on the floor. So I had to kind of like split that into two and just figure out ways to help me kind of like progress my game and just progress myself to be able to come out and just withstand, you know, playing against some of these big guys in the league. You know, you got the Joels, the Jokic's, you know, at the end of the day, at some point in time, you're going to get pushed around. There's going to some, be some point in time you get frustrated because, you know, you want to, you know, do your best best to play against the best, but sometimes the upper hand is always the upper hand. Daniel, so what's it been like playing later? for Coach Kidd so far? Hmm? What's it been like playing for Coach Kidd so far? Oh, it's great. Um, he, of course, one of the best in the league when he had played and just really just implementing just kind of like some of his knowledge into the game and some of the things that we want to do here is just something that, you know, I really – I'm really inspired by because of just, you know, what he did in the league for sure. And he's just taking like the stuff that he learned, you know, the stuff that he did and the stuff that he was around, he's implemented it just like how he wants to coach. And I just see it day in, day out. He's a real down to earth coach. He's real humble. And for sure, when he needs to get on your tail, he'll do that too. The defensive numbers for the team, the improvement coincides pretty closely with the trades for you and PJ. Mm -hmm. When you boil it down, what do you think those trades for the two of you brought? What, how did they help this team, do you think? Um, in all honesty, it just brought two pieces that, I mean, you can even ask guys on the team that they said that they needed at the end of the day, you know, and um, just with like just some of the staff and stuff, they were saying like <laughs> throughout my pre-draft and stuff like that, they were saying um, they always had, of course, eyes on me at the end of the day. I didn't know where I was going when I came out my second year and they were just telling me stories of just like how the pre-draft and stuff went. I was like, yeah, it sounds like I could have been here my first year, you know? <laughs> so uh, um, just, you know, piggy looking back at that, it's just something that, you know, I always hold there and just having both of us come in pretty much at the right time is just something that just kind of like helped us boost our potential and just put us in the right spot at the right time in all honesty. That series against Embiid, mm -hmm. uh, you said us that's time. Where in that process did you accept that you could have done everything right as a defender mm -hmm. and he still might score? Uh, Against anybody? Yeah. Um, I think it was maybe this. I don't know if it was the first game or the second game. He had a jump shot over me. It was like a fadeaway. And I was like, the, so this is the ball. My hand was like there and he still made it. You know, like for sure, 100% thought I would block the shot. And I looked back and the ball was going through the hoop. That's why I was like, oh, yeah, this is. It's just insane, <laughs> you, know, you know, just, you know, some of the shots that he made that series was crazy. And it's just, you know, it was a learning period for me because I was trying to find ways to just put myself in position, not to really just be in foul trouble so much. I was playing against a guy that was really, you know, really good at drawing fouls at the end of the day. So it's just like, OK, this is a learning point for me. Now I have to really just, you know, learn how to move my puppies at the end of the day. <laughs> how much of your aggressiveness is helped by the fact that you know that Derek's back? Mm -hmm. behind you and that you, know, you, you have six fouls mm -hmm. um, it it means it it means a lot in all honesty because you know if one guy falls down the next guy steps up and that's that matter that's I would say in the case of when it comes to fouls injuries so on and so forth and it's just like you know the one two punch so if I get an early foul trouble I know I got somebody who's going to come in and pretty much you know pick up from where I left off so you guys leaving tomorrow right Derek? yes sir okay yes because it's an early game yeah. Yeah, it's twelve thirty, so we'll leave. We'll leave tomorrow after practice. Okay. Kyrie talked about you know, when him and LeBron were figuring out how to have success in the playoffs. A lot of that was respecting when it was the other guy's turn to take over. What have you seen as far as that growth with Kyrie and Luca? I mean, there were growing pain moments early, you know, after the trade, and we've seen some of the successful moments this season. Yeah, I think uh, it's just. Um, I think. Kai said, said it best. It's just understanding uh, each other. And I think uh, sometimes we want things to happen uh, instantly. Um, and it didn't happen after the trade. Uh, but you can see uh, since the preseason and the regular season that uh, the understanding is at a high. And they, they both trust one another and, and have confidence in one another of making a play uh, for a teammate or for themselves. Coach, on uh, March 
five, you had a pretty bad loss to Indiana. And all of a sudden, the room pretty much buried you, and you're the worst. And, you're and you took a lot of very questions patiently. You said, give it time, it'll work itself out. Obviously, it has. Do you feel vindicated in any way with that? No, I, it's just part of the job as being a, a coach. You're going to be criticized um, about um, what others think. There's nothing I can do with, you know, but do my job and and support and help the the guys in that locker room. Um, patience is a key in life, not in sport, but in in real life. Um, and and hopefully uh, people can understand that. But um, those guys in that locker room understand patience and understood what the journey. Uh, the season wasn't over on March 5th. Um, it wasn't our first loss. It wasn't our first bad loss. Um, so it's just a matter of learning. Um, sometimes matchups, um, you just you get bad matchups, and it happens. But as long as you keep learning and uh, everybody stays together, and, and that's what happened, uh, I would say, after March 5th um, with all the opinions um, that were um, right or wrong. But that's just part of our business. That's just what it is. I've been in this too long to to complain. Um, I'm always going to take questions uh, in a positive way and uh, and learn from it. And so, um, vindicated, no. Um, goal is to, to win a championship. I've had the opportunity to do it as a player and a coach. Now, with, you know, I would like to do it again as a coach. Jason, I know all your players are important, but how important has Gaff been to your team? Yeah, Gaff uh, has been important. Uh, being able to start, bring him off the bench, start. Um, he's about the team. Um, he's given us something um, that we haven't had here. And uh, and to be able to have Gaff and D-Live, uh, two guys who can protect the rim, protect the paint, and then on the offensive end, uh, being able to finish uh, with the lobs. Um, again, when you talk about Gaff, uh, he's been mentioned uh, with one of the best in the world to do it, and that's Wilt, and that just doesn't happen every day. So uh, he's been a big part of our success. You mentioned, you mentioned D-Live. I know you said you wanted to see how he would respond to the first practice the other day. Just how did he respond and how did he look today? Yeah, he, he's done uh, incredible. He's an incredible young man. Uh, his spirit is... Uh, in a good place of what he's going through off the floor. Um, you wouldn't know um, with the way that uh, he had practice today, uh, but we all know um, being with him yesterday um, of what he's going through. So um, as a 20 year old, he's he's been incredible. Um, and so uh, we're here to support uh, what he's going through off the floor. But uh, again, he came to work today and he did a great job. Kyrie also said he feels like it's been a pretty long road. So I think he's had six years since he's had a 50-win season. How poised do you think he is and been well positioned right now mentally, physically, to, to help carry this team on maybe another run? Yeah, I think Kai's at a, in, a, in a great place. Uh, um, when you look at physically and mentally, um, as he's brought up, I guess uh, it's been a while since he's won 50. Um, but... He, he was a big reason for us to win 50, and you could see uh, when you talk about late game, but just down the stretch here um, of late, he's been playing incredible, and we're going to need that in this series. A couple of days ago, we were talking about the star power of the six probably Hall of Famers in the series. How do you Seven count here. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, he's already in. Now the other guys are not. So. There you go, D. I appreciate that, D. <laughs> How do you think that that will affect the series? Do you think it will lift the level of play? Uh, well, the play is going to be high uh, when you talk about that talent in the future uh, Hall of Famers. Um, but I think um, a lot of us uh, understand that there's always an X factor, and it's not a star. It's going to be. Uh, someone that comes off the bench or someone who isn't, you know, talked about a lot that's going to be in the right place at the right time. And so um, you always believe stars are going to be stars. Um, they try to make it tough. They've seen everything. Um, but there's that X factor of that guy who who does catch fire or who does, uh, who makes a, you know, incredible steal. But just that X factor, that person being in the right place at the right time. Jason, this time of year, late game, 
What, what are those moments like for you when it's pressure time and maybe you have to drop a play to try and win a game or push the right button, put the right guy in? What is that like for you? Yeah, I think uh, it's fun. It's, uh, it's a great situation um, when you talk about you know late game. Um, a lot of times the late game stuff as a coach, you've already gone through it um, with the guys. Um, and so it's just a matter of, uh, you know, being prepared. And we, we've, we've done a lot of the late game stuff uh, going forward here. And those guys being able to respond. And uh, the great test is um, during the, the games during the season, being able to uh, put the guys in a position to be successful. Um, this year, I think we finished second in clutch. And so, but it helps to have uh, talent um, when you talk about Luca and Kai. Um, that you, you truly believe one of those guys will get open um, or they're going to be uh, where they get someone else a wide open look because they get all the attention. Coach, as mentioned, you were a Hall of Famer. You were a great player. I want to ask about your time as a coach, though. Um, you just become one of the better coaches in the NBA. What do you think, what have you learned from your time as a coach in the league so far? Yeah, coaching is not easy. Um, I didn't come up in the coaching ranks. I came in as a, as a player, um, and it's taken me time, and it's going to continue to take time. Um, understanding some will say the players are different. Um, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's hard, and you got to you have to work. Um, but uh, you know, understanding as a player, you cannot be afraid to fail, and and that's I'm not afraid to fail, uh, it, and and to learn from failures. No one's perfect in this room, and no one's perfect on the floor. And so understanding where you've made your mistakes, look at the mistakes and, and try to correct them so that you don't make them again and, and continue working at your craft. And as a coach, no different than a player. You spend a lot of time in the gym, and you spend a lot of time looking at the TV or the computer, you know, trying to put your players in a position to be successful. And so as a coach, I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to sit here and, and say that I made a mistake. Um, but we will bounce back and we'll be better. I know it's not the same league that you played in, but what are some of the similarities <laughs> from back then? Uh, no, you know, th these young men are, are very talented. Um, just understanding the skill set uh, that they do have, the importance of the three. Um, when we played um, with the peach baskets, it was about <laughs> being, being closer to, to, to the peach basket uh, as close as you could. So that means throwing it to the tallest guy. Uh, <laughs> but, the, uh, but the, you know, just you look at 6'10 point guards, you look at, um, you know, the, the three, the depth that these young men are shooting the ball. Um, and, and so... It's the athlete has maybe changed, uh, but the game is still, you know, the same. And this time of the year, the game slows down a little bit, but it's about will, it's about want, and um, and that hasn't changed, um, you know, this time of the year if you want to win the championship. Back to Gafford, uh, is there anything about his game that surprised you, or did you has he done what you guys anticipated he would do? No, we we felt, you know, with the trade that he was what we wanted. Um, I think when you look at uh, his hands, uh, great hands, uh, being able to finish, as we talked about, has had multiple streaks here. Um, but just, I think, his attitude, uh, when you talk about Gaff and uh, PJ coming in, I think they really have helped change uh, the culture, the chemistry of fitting right in and not you know, complaining. They just came in and did their work at a very high level, and, and I think that's rubbed off on, on the other guys that are here.